Shalom and welcome once again to Treasures of the Torah. I'm Pastor Matt McEwen. This week, our Torah portion is Ve'et Hanan. And this is a difficult Torah portion because of the disappointment that is involved. This is where Moses has to face the fact that he will not be able to enter the Promised Land. And the sages tell us of a bit of a bargain or deal that he wants to make, but it's simply not possible. Let's go there now. It says here, But God was angry with me for your sakes. This is in chapter 3, verse 26. God said to Moses, You can't have it both ways. I have already nullified my decree and upheld yours. I said, I shall destroy them when Israel worshiped the golden calf. And you said, forgive them, and your desire prevailed. Now, if you wish that your desire, let me cross over, in other words, let me go into the promised land, should be upheld in my decree that you shall not enter the land, that that should be nullified, then you must retract your forgive them. If you wish to forgive them to be uphold, upheld, then you must retract, let me cross over. This is an interesting back and forth that the Almighty is having with Moses. This comes to us from the Midrash Rabbah. In this passage, Moses has to decide, do I want to go into the promised land more than I want to have stood in the gap for the children of Israel during their sin of the golden calf? If you'll remember, God even offered to start a whole new nation from Moses. But Moses said, what will the Egyptians say about you, Lord? What will they say about your word and your faithfulness? And so Moses was willing to be blotted out if they, the children of Israel, might be saved and redeemed. We see something very similar happen in the Brit Hadashah in the New Testament with Paul. He ends up saying this. When Moses heard this, he proclaimed, May Moses die and a hundred like him, and not a fingernail of one of them be harmed. I want to read you another passage that comes from the Yalkut Shimoni. And it says here about the phrase in heaven or in earth. It says this, when Moses saw that the decree had been sealed against him to not go into the promised land, he went into a circle and sat inside it and said, I'm not moving from here until you nullify the decree. He then wrapped himself in sackcloth and covered himself with ashes and stood in prayer and supplication before God until the heaven and the earth and the very laws of creation began to tremble and said, perhaps the time has come for God to, de to destroy the world. What did God do at that moment? He announced that every gate of heaven and every gate of every court that Moses' prayer should not be admitted. For the voice of Moses' prayer was like a sword that slices and rips and which nothing can stop. This is the power of Moses' prayer. Said Moses to God, if you will not allow me to enter the land, allow me to enter as a beast of the field who grazes on the grass and drinks the water and sees the world that way. Let my soul be as one of those. Said Moses to God, if you will not allow me to enter the land, allow me to enter as a bird that flies in the air to all four corners of the earth to collect its, to collect its feed and then in the evening returns to its nest. Let my soul be as one of those. To which God said, enough. Moses was so intent on being able to go into the promised land, even though God had decreed that he could not, that he wanted to try everything at his disposal. He wanted his prayer to be powerful. He wanted to sit in sackcloth and ashes, to show God how contrite he was. Although this seems very bold, and we see the power of Moses' prayer as the heaven and earth began to shake, although this seems like something maybe only Moses could do, I think maybe there's a lesson here for us as far as the kavanah, as far as the, in, the intention of the heart, and maybe the fervor, the fervency of our prayers. If we feel that heaven has decreed that something that we're praying about should not come to pass, should we, like Moses, try and, and fight for that? Should we try to do everything at our disposal to, to make sure that we get the answer from heaven that we are 
hoping for. I think as long as we're respectful, I don't think there's any problem with doing that. But I think we must be like Moses, as it says here in the Yal Kuchimoni. Eventually, God just says, enough, no more. And that's what we must go with. We were just mentioning Paul a little bit earlier. This thorn in the flesh that he had. Three times he asked the Lord to take it away. And what did God say? His grace is enough. His grace is sufficient. That his power is made perfect in our weakness. It is interesting and something that my local Messianic rabbi mentioned in a message just a short time ago. Moses eventually does get to go into the promised land in spirit because we see at the mountain of transfiguration that he is there with Elijah, both of them coming to visit Yeshua. So in a way, he eventually did get to come into the promised land. My prayer for you this week is that you will accept the answers that the Lord has for you. But if you feel by the Holy Spirit, you are to continue to push to, to really double down with your prayer, then do it. As long as you are open to when God says enough, and then you have to let it go because the grace of God is sufficient. And his final word is the final word. Thank you for joining me this week. I pray that this has been a blessing to you and maybe even a blessing to a situation that you or someone you care about might be dealing with. If you'd like to join the yeshiva that I study in, go to shuvu.tv and fill out an application there and you can study in the largest Messianic Jewish yeshiva in the world. Thank you. Shabbat Shalom.